When I see white girls my age getting engaged and my age group still standing in lines getting smashed or passed. Mm -hmm. You know, black. Can we finally talk about how a lot of black girls and women will never have a classic dating experience? What? They will never have a date planned for them or a bouquet of roses waiting on them. Never. And we all know why, but I just want to know if we're ready to talk about why. Do we know why? Because if we really get into it, it's going to get very dark. Because I think I know why. And a lot of people, oh, you know, black women are hypersexual, blah, blah, blah. If selling sex is the only way you can get the attention of your male counterparts, what should you then do? <laughs> I'm going to try to say this the nicest way possible while also not getting canceled on YouTube. But listening to some of these videos online truly demonstrates why the Electoral College exists. Taking the power out of the individual for selecting elected officials, which is done in part to not allow um, sub- intelligent people to have a large impact on something so important as electing government officials. And when I say this, I'm not talking to this woman right here specifically, maybe just a little bit, but I'm talking to an audience of women who refer to themselves as divestors that eat this information up. They are easily led by their feelings and emotions without taking a step back to really critically think about the situations that they're placing themselves in or the type of men that they are attempting to date. Shit, there's ain't shit about every group of people that have ever existed. There's good cops and there's ain't shit cops. There's good people who follow a religious faith and then there's bad people that engage in touching little boys or are like the Westboro Baptist Church. See, intelligent people understand that a small subset doesn't necessarily represent the entire group. Now that I got that out the way, no, we are not ready to have this conversation because you start from an illogical place. You're already starting from a place which gives allowance for women who sexualize themselves publicly while also chastising those same men for treating those women like shit. If the words that you spew out of your mouth are disgusting shit and nasty and always have a negative tone surrounded around it, then more than likely, like will attract like and you will attract an ain't shit guy. Ta-da! I just solved the whole riddle for you. You attract shit because you ain't shit. But let's proceed and see what the young liar has to say. Are we ready to have this conversation? You're not. Are we ready? Because I have met plenty of black women in their 30s who've never been on a real date. Y'all y'all all ain't shit. Who've never flowers. Who've never gotten a gift from the men. Y'all are all trash. Date. Are we ready for this conversation? Yes, I, look, I can be ready. I can be ready at a moment's notice. But I think far too often these questions get thrown up in the air and these women absorb it and latch onto it as if there's nothing that they can do to alter or change their situation to want better for themselves. And listen, at the end of the day, these are the discussions. Low level, low IQ, smooth brained, within the same era of is paying $100 for a date too much is taking her to cheesecake factory too cheap i'm tired of seeing videos like this and continuing to have these conversations if you truly want to have these conversations then begin to hold yourself and the sister code accountable what you display what you project what your image is will be a reflection of what you will receive back and this goes for my g's as well if your image is trash, your hair is unkept, nose hair coming out, you speak venom and hate and toxicity throughout your life, that's all that you deserve. We need to get out of a place of constantly condemning the other person while not truly holding a mirror up to oneself and assessing how I can do better. I don't believe in equality. I believe in equity. Mm. And there's a huge difference. What's the difference? Equality is you and me, we're dating. You make half a million dollars a year. I make $50,000 a year. We go 50-50 on our rent on our apartment. It's equal. It's not fair. Whereas equity is if you and I are dating, you make half a million dollars, I make $50,000, and you pay for most of the rent, and I pay for my portion. And it is prorated based on how much we make. Because it is then a comparable burden on our financial Financial situations. Mm -hmm. It's the same percentage of your income as it is for me. 
95% of women use men for their money. 95% of your men don't even have money. How are you mean for something you don't got? We playing pretend now? It's make-believe? Just say you mad she don't want you because you broke. I'll be damned to be with a man. And all he's doing is putting me on my back and patting me on my shoulder and say, well done, babe. Babe, don't forget the bills this month. And don't forget I need money for my haircut. I'll be damned. Next caller immediately. Women like this often say this after they've given up their youth and their box to men just like that. But then they raise their standards too much and then place themselves out of the market. Asking for a guy to forget about her past or a history of dating men that wanted nothing to do with her besides her insides. Stop being disrespectful and asking if my girl is pregnant. She's not pregnant, okay? If she wants to gain weight, if she wants to eat all day and she don't want to go to the gym and she don't want to go on a diet no more, if she doesn't want to care about her health and she doesn't want to look good anymore, it's okay, okay? That's on her. This is her thing and I support her, okay? All right? If she don't want to go to the doctor and figure out there's issues, if she wants to stay constipated, that's on her. It's her decision. So leave her alone. She's not pregnant. There goes two exits to the left. My nearest exit is still in front of me. My guy looks kind of suspicious. Let me make sure he doesn't get too close to her. Make my way downtown. Walking fast. This person home. Womanhood because I am a woman. You haven't experienced other typical things like periods. Just like you'll never have the typical experience of knowing what it feels like to have a significant other. You're off to a bad start. I have a lovely significant other. I'll refute the rest of your claims, so let's hear it. Just like you'll never have the typical experience of knowing what it feels like to be inside of a woman. You are an odd person. I'm a Christian man that is dating to marry. This does not have any relevance to the validity of my arguments. Nobody cares about what comes out of that hole in your face. If anything, we all laugh at you because... I have over 280,000 followers. You have 200 and get 20 views. Next. Your distaste and your foul words towards the transgender... Where have I done that? In fact, in my video, I specifically say this. Bless. We should not tear anyone down. I was simply pointing out stereotypes and asking the definition of a word. Could you answer it? What is a woman? You're scared because you're intrigued, you're scared because you like it, and you're scared because part of you, you know, part of you wants to get it in with a transgender female. Just admit it! What are you talking about? You are so weird. I'm in a happy relationship with a woman who I will marry and have children with. Make sure they don't grow up to be like you. Next time, maybe actually make an argument if you can. Have a good day. How much does a man have to make to be with you? Does he have to make? Yeah. Shit. Six figures plus. Six figures. I need vacations. A oh, a year. Duh. I need vacations. I need nice vehicle. I need nice sleep. I need a lot. I want to feel like I'm I'm well taken care of. I like a nice, like overall good well being. Okay, and so okay, I feel like okay. my partner can support that. What if he's living with his mom? Would you still be with him? No. 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 What is your living situation right now? So right now I'm taking a break. I used to live in New York for four years, but I'm like slowing down, traveling, you know, exploring. Okay. I'm trying to move here. Do you believe in 50-50? I think it takes more than 50-50, honestly. Like in the beginning, like I feel like the guy has to show 80. The girl can just be in, you know, hot, not hot and cold, but like in. The yeah. guy has to get more. To okay. me, that reels me in. Oh. I'm like, mm, I want to do more. Would you go 50-50 on rent and like payments and everything like that? I That's prefer okay. not to. Why not? Because like, why should I have to do that? Like, I'm, shouldn't you have I'm, to do I'm going to be making money for us. Meanwhile. I would 100% share I think, my yeah, money. It's ours. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Well, if they want to just have mine as mine, that's okay too. But <laughs> yeah. like, I would be open to sharing it. How old are you? You never ask a woman a age. I'm old enough. I'm grown. Are you pushing 30 or past it? Oh my God. I'm old. I'm up there. That's my first Storms in. Oh, no. What do you need oh. from a man who you're going to take seriously? Money. <laughs> I saw that girl talking about her broke boyfriend, but he has an amazing personality and she don't know what to do. She even says that she pays for vacation, pays for dinner, but she has the mindset of, well, I feel like I need to work for two people instead of one. I'm not going to lie. That's the red flag. How is your girl outworking you in the relationship? You guys both have responsibilities. You guys both have a place to say separate places, but he's always having to fix things on the houses, but you have responsibilities as well. Once she said I feel like I need to work for two people instead of one. That's that's the red flag for me. For my personal opinion, I would work harder than I would want my girl to work. If I'm with someone and there comes down to a time of who's going to work the two jobs, 
who's going to work the three jobs, it's good enough that she works one. I There's a point in time where you're going to have to step up and figure it out. That's the whole point of women wanting to rely on you. You know how to bring out the feminine energy. Now, I hope she appreciates it once it comes to the situation. But for me personally, I wouldn't really want my girl to think that she needs to work harder than me. That sounds a little backwards. I completely agree with this man right here. I don't think that a woman can be in her feminine unless she's operating in a state where she feels provided for as well as protected. And if it's her that's doing a majority of the provisioning and working hard to supply for both of y'all in order to do that, I think that that's ass backwards. And I think that a man that follows underneath that logic represents the fall of the modern man today, represents the feminization or the demasculinization of young men today. I think that it's nasty work. And in fact, I can't even have men in my life, friends of mine that operate in that air because you are an anchor. There's nothing that you can teach me. There's nothing that you can show me. There's no type of things that I can even learn from you because your life is consumed with chilling, with being lazy, watching Netflix, overconsumption of video games. And if I even want to be next to dudes like that, what makes you think that beautiful women want to be next to dudes like that? <sighs> Come on. Hey.